So when I think of that part of the story, that's kind of the beginning of Christian receiving help along his way um, and some guidance. Because if you remember what an interpreter was, he was who explained the meanings of some different things to Christian. And that was important because as we know, he kept tending to go the wrong way or get lost or forget things. And so he needed that help from someone to guide him and show him where he was going. And so the interpreter showed him a picture of the Good Shepherd, told him how he would care for him and help him. He showed him patience and passion and um, taught him about how he needed to have patience and be willing to wait for the better things. And he showed him the brave soldier who Christian actually watched take that final kind of journey um, from far away. And so all of those things were meant to encourage Christian that he would have help along the way, that he would have assistance. Um, and when we talked about those chapters, we talked about the fact that interpreter um, was playing the part of the Holy Spirit in that part of the story. And as you know, the Holy Spirit is part of God. God is made of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in the Bible, it tells us, Jesus said to us before he left this earth, I will send the Holy Spirit a helper to you. He will teach you, he will help you, and he will remind you of the things that you have learned. And so we all have that opportunity to receive that same help. So I picked this out as an important part of our story because it's a part that can affect us daily. We have the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will give you my spirit to help you. And that can be a really important part in our journey and our walk because the Holy Spirit guides us uh, when we're faced with a situation where we have to make a choice, possibly a right choice and a wrong choice. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us that feeling of, oh, I better not go that way. That part is bad. I really need to make this choice. And if you're not feeling that, then you want to be praying, God, please help me to feel those guidance and, and uh, instructions from the Holy Spirit. Because he wants to give you that. He wants to help you with that. So that is a key part. Um, the other thing I wanted to focus on, and you'll understand why in a moment, is one of our statements is the Holy Spirit reminds us of God's word. Now, I know that last week, the sixth grade, wrapped up a very long section of scripture that they spent the entire year memorizing. Fifth grade, you have a verse today, your last verse, and it's a, it's a lengthy one. But even besides those sections, over the course of your time here at the school, you have been putting into your heart, into your mind, a lot of scripture. When you consider that you have often weekly Bible verses, at least, that you are memorizing, um, you are putting all of that God's word into your heart, into your mind. And the Holy Spirit is the one who reminds us of those. When we're faced in a difficult situation, when we might not have the chance to open our Bible and look for guidance, the Holy Spirit will bring back to you things that you have already put in there. Instructions from God's word, help, a reminder to not be afraid. All of those things will continue with you for your entire life. I still remember verses that I learned in school when I was in the fifth grade and other years in the version that I learned them, which is not the same as you guys are learning them, but they still are in there. And when I hear some of your verses, what comes to my mind is the way I learned it when I was your age, because he is constantly helping us by reminding us of those. So I just wanna to stress to you the importance of what you've done. Not only is it a big accomplishment to store all of that section, that entire chapter sixth grade or that long passage fifth grade, to put all of that in and memorize that was work, but that you will reap the benefits of that for the remainder of your life if you allow God to use those words in your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to remind you of them in the times that you need them. 
So this section just gives us that reminder that we all can have that help, that assistance, that help from the Holy Spirit to help us, to teach us, and to remind us of God's word. my chapel. So we talked about the hill of difficulty. That's where Christian was going up this hill, and I compared it to stepping on something. Do you remember what I compared it to, Bella? Legos. Everybody stepped on a Lego before, and that is so painful. And so it said it was covered with rough stones and sharp pieces. It became steeper and steeper. He had to creep up on his hands and knees. And so I can just imagine, like, being on your hands and knees and like climbing up a hill of Legos, like they just cut into you. Layton, you can, you feel it today, don't you? Layton got a nice rock cut yesterday. So it just creeps up and it says, what should I have done if I had to climb this hill yesterday? Because the day before, he got rid of his what? His burden. He had made it to the cross and his burden just rolled away. And we said that that wasn't as climactic as we would like for it to have been. We expected like this big to do about the burden rolling away, but it's a good thing. He was very thankful because he didn't have to carry the burden on his back as he was crawling his way up the hill of difficulty. But at the top of the hill of difficulty is the next slide, and that was the Palace Beautiful. When he goes up towards the Palace Beautiful, remember Christian sees lions, but he doesn't realize they're chained. Remember, he's walking along this path and there's lions on either side. You guys are like my lions today, okay? And he doesn't realize that they're chained. And so he's got that fear in him, like anybody would, okay? I wouldn't just walk up to a lion nonchalantly, you know? He would kind of have that fear. And so in James it says, testing of Christian's faith and perseverance, the palace of beautiful. Um, James 1, 2 through 4, you guys are familiar with that, right? Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when we face trials of many kinds. And, and Christian was facing that trial. He was getting ready to walk through the lions. And there was a guy there. His name was Watchful. And Watchful said, oh, Christian, don't be frightened. The lions are both chained. Keep in the middle of the path, and they won't hurt you. What he was saying is don't sway one side or the other. you got to stay right in the middle. And we talked about how that's like our walk with God. We can't sway to the right or to the left. we got to stay on the path that he's given us even if the path is hard, like Legos. So the two key coordinates that I had um, were James 1, 2, 3, 4, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of any kind because you know that the testing of your faith, faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you can be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And stay determined in difficult times. We were just talking as teachers the other day about some of you that have faced some serious, difficult times this year, big ones, and we're like, they have shown so much perseverance. In the difficult times, God will give you the strength that you need to finish. It doesn't seem like it in the moment, but he certainly does. Um, and he also will give you the rest that you need. Now, there's, this was not on me, because I think I'm done out, I'm out of slides, right? Oh, no. That's, oh, that's the first I wanted to bring up, do you remember when Christian got whipped? That was also my chapel. Why did he get whipped? Does anybody remember why he got whipped? Loose. He what? Right, he had done wrong, Daniel Magic. Yeah, he listened to the flatterer. They're like, don't listen to the flatterer. Use your map. And Christian went to the flatterer and didn't use his map. And so they had to be punished. And one thing that we talked about was that sometimes punishment is what we need. There are consequences for our actions. So, hill of difficulty. Stay true in the difficult times. Persevere. God will give you the strength and rest. And yes, there are consequences for your actions. Good consequences and bad consequences. So we talked, when, when I had mine, we talked about the importance of 
your companions. Having good Christian friends. When when I uh, was working on my two two uh, chapters that I covered, he had just left the dark valley. And who did he catch up with when he left the dark valley? Which friend, Grayson? Faithful. He caught up with Faithful. And he and Faithful then were there along the way to encourage each other. He, he established a strong friendship with Faithful, and they were able to help hold each other accountable, to pray for each other, to, to be there for each other in, in the difficult times, and to encourage each other. And we talk about the importance of of building strong Christian friendships. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Who's, if one falls down, his friend can help him up. Good Christian friends are important in our walk of faith. And sometimes our good, our good Christian friends are going to be good, good Christian friends. And that might mean that sometimes they'll look at you and say, um, I don't think that's a very good idea. That, that's a good that's a good Christian friend. You've got people in your life that will do that for you. Those that's you should be thankful. You need people in your life that will do that for you because this is a difficult journey that we're on. And we need people. We're not supposed to do it alone. God wants us to invest in other people and to allow other people to invest in us so that we can stay encouraged and keep our eyes fixed on the prize. And then the other thing that we focused on when I was uh, giving mine was faithfulness and the importance of faithfulness. And I shared with you the song, uh, Find Us Faithful, that started out with pilgrims on the journey of a narrow road and those who've gone before us line the way. But, but the, the chorus of that talks about uh, leaving a legacy of faithfulness. May the ones who come behind us Find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. The footprints that we leave, lead them to believe. And the lives we live, inspire them to obey. That, that should be the goal that, that we, as Christians, have. As we're walking out our faith, that we are working to leave a legacy for the ones that are coming behind us. We are leaving a legacy, but it's up to us whether we leave a godly legacy or whether we leave... Uh, a legacy that maybe others don't necessarily want to pattern themselves after. And so, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on, your, on the tablet of your heart, Proverbs 33. It's important to stay faithful and focus on living your life so that the legacy that you leave is one of faithfulness. What I'm focusing on um, is when Christian and Faithful were in Vanity Fair. Do you remember that part of the story? Um, and what happened to Christian and Faithful? With, um, Lily. You can talk louder than that. I heard you talk to Landon louder than that. So faithful ended up losing his life. And so the part that I have um, talks about forgiving others, I'm sure that that was hard for Christian to forgive those that hurt his friend. But there will be people that hurt us in our lives that we have to be forgiving. And then it also talks about being faithful in the race in 2 Timothy 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. Um, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about a story that I have done in chapel before in a much longer version. So you're going to get a very short version of this. But there were some men and their wives and their children back in the 50s. And you can go ahead and put their pictures on the screen. Um, that felt that the Lord was calling them to a place called Ecuador down in South America. Okay. So we have Roger Darian, Pete Fleming, Jim Elliott, Nate Saint, and Ed McCauley. And they went 
down to Ecuador to share God's word with people who had never heard before. In fact, Nate Saint, the one close to the end there, was a pilot and he kept flying over this area and they heard that there were these, this, these Indians that lived there that were very, very violent. They were known as the Wyadani Indians and nobody had been able to be friends with them yet. And so he kept flying over them. He's like, we've got to come up with something. So he created this system where he could take the plane and turn it in a really tight circle. And if they dropped a bucket, the bucket would be still at the bottom and they could put things in it and give to the Wyandani because he wanted them to know they were friendly. So they did this time and time again. And finally they landed on a beach in that area and they met a man that they named George. His name wasn't George, but that's what they called him. And George was very excited because he had never been in a plane and they took him up on a plane ride and all of that. And they thought they were making really great inroads to becoming friends with these people that nobody had been friendly to. And they hadn't been friendly to anybody. In fact, the way they looked at things is they, if they were angry, let's say it was Jackson's family, they were angry at Jackson, do you know how they handled it? They would go spear their entire family. And then because Jackson's family would be speared, if there was any friends of Jackson's, they would go spear the other family. So this went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. They were not nice people, okay? And so, in fact, there was like a 60% homicide rate. That means out of 10 people, six of them would not make it very far in their lives because they, they would keep going back and forth with hate and anger and all of that. So they met George and thought that they'd made some good peaceful contact, but what they didn't know is that there was a family feud going on. So then they decided they were gonna go down and try to meet these people again, and they landed on the beach. And these people were not very happy with them. And all five men lost their lives. Their wives and their children were still back at their base camp. You can click. So that was back in January of 1956. But here's the cool part of the story. The man who speared Nate Saint came to know the Lord eventually. The women, some of the women of those men stayed behind with their children and were able to talk them, talk to them and lead them to Jesus Christ. And the man that speared Nate Saint became a grandfather to one of the little boys. He, he decided, I took your father from you and I will take that place. Talk about forgiveness. You got people there that are trying to, to live in a place that took people they loved away from them. And so I have a very short clip because I really thought this was pretty cool and I found this out. The man that speared Nate Saint is now talking with Nate Saint's son, Steve Saint, in a some kind of conference. And he was talking um, about following the trail, because that's, in his language, that makes sense. That was God's word, following the trail, in this pilgrimage of life. And his name's Minkaya, and Steve Saint looks up to him much like a father and his kids look up to him like a grandfather. So just watch this clip. I thank you for do you know how to walk God's trail? He gave us his markings so that we can see the trail. When the Waurani used to kill each other, they would be separated, but the children would follow their father's markings so they could find him again. And these are God's markings. He sent his son down here, dripping his blood to mark the trail. And with that same blood, grandfather says, Father Creator can wash our hearts clean, like the sky when it has no clouds in it, so we can see this trail. You just have to follow the markings. In, in my place where I grew up, where we live in the jungle, I teach the people, if you walk your trail, 
well, where are you going to end up? Your name is not written there. But he said, but if you walk God's trail, your name is all, your name is already marked there. And coming there, God has made a place for us to live. example of that key coordinate of forgiveness, forgiving others who have hurt you. What a great example and also a great example of someone who understands this whole idea of the same journey that we've been reading about and, and applying it to, to our lives and especially eternally. Thanks, Ms. Lee, for sharing that and um, other teachers for sharing those key pieces. All right. We started this journey a long time ago, right? couple times through the way, I've asked you, like, are you getting anxious? Are you wondering, are we there yet? Are we there yet? How much longer is this going to take? We're finally here. I have your final key coordinate of the whole journey that we've been on. Okay? This is the one that I most want you to remember. Okay? All right, Miss Wade, show it to us. Wait a minute. We have to forgive others, be faithful, need good Christian friends. Miss Wood, is that, is there another slide? Tori, uh, Kelsey, did you guys mix up the presentations at all? I don't know. I mean, you, you guys, your teachers have just presented you with some really important ideas, right? From our journey. Stay determined, leave a legacy of faithfulness. And I'm telling you, here's your last one. And I just give you some numbers? It kind of doesn't make sense, does it? Does anybody know what those numbers might represent? Eli. Thank you, now where are Eli saying directions to a place? He's he's very hot, okay? He's very, very close. Rylan. Latitude and longitude. Oh, Miss Miller, map skills have been successful, right? All those days doing map skills in history class. Pat yourselves on the back, especially Riley here. And, and Eli's right too. Our coordinates of a map, the latitude and longitude of a place, are measured in degrees, okay? And they give us, like Eli said, directions to a certain place. And so I'm gonna take us on one more little journey, okay? And we're gonna follow these map coordinates through Google Earth. So Ms. Hoyt's gonna switch to a screen that starts us at Google Earth. And I had already plugged in those same latitude and longitude coordinates. And when we click enter, it's gonna zoom in on the globe and it's gonna take us to kind of this area, the Middle East, all right? Western Asia, Europe, Northern Africa, all right? Eli said, I think I know where this is gonna be. You keep in your mind where you think you might think that these map coordinates might lead us, okay? Because I'm telling you that out of all the lessons that we've learned, this is the most important one that I need to make sure you take away from this whole 2020-2021 Little Pilgrim's Progress journey, all right? All right, Miss Quick, zoom in a little bit more. All right, we've got closer view there in the Middle East, Egypt, Saudi Arabia. You guys in the front can see the country signs. They're seeing Israel, okay? All right, Miss Quick, zoom in one more time. All right, that still is the same point. It's in that northern area of Israel. Raise your hand if you think you know when I reveal what name that place is on the map. Oh, not very many. Just 
Just a couple. All right, Miss Flint, go ahead and click. What is that place? Bethlehem. Those are the map coordinates for Bethlehem. Now, how many of you who have raised your hands will say, yep, that's where I was thinking. That's where I was thinking we were taking this little field trip. Good. Why do you think that I would say that the most important thing that you can take away from this whole journey that we've been on this year would be Bethlehem? the map coordinates for Bethlehem. Jennifer. It's where Jesus was born. That's the most important thing for you to remember from this whole iChat journey all year, from all the charts and all the extra work that you had to do in Google Classroom and all the discussions in Bible class and all the reading and all of your specials teachers and Mr. Muse and our guests that came in to help us take this journey. The most important thing that you can take away from it is focusing on Jesus, okay? Because that's what those coordinates represent. And it's a little more than that too, okay? Now, one thing that I always love about traveling and taking journeys is bringing back souvenirs. Do any of you like to do that too when you take a trip somewhere? I think it's a little bit of a trap. Disney does this. You know when you get off of certain rides, you can't exit the ride without going through the gift shop? Yeah, do you guys notice that? I bet your parents notice that, really, right? They're probably like pulling you like, come on, come on, no, we don't need another mug, okay? Or another set of Mickey ears, all right? Well, as we got to the end of this journey, your teachers and I thought, you know what, we need a souvenir. So Ms. Miller's gonna help um, start passing these out, and your teachers are gonna pass out, um, and Mr. Muse, if you could help over here with um, 5B. They have a little souvenir for you, and I'm going to give them time to pass it out to you, and then we're going to talk about it for a minute. that are on there. That's what a lot of you noticed first. Said, oh, it's got the coordinates. Okay, that's important because I want you to remember in this whole journey that we've been on that that's the focus. Okay, Our eyes need to be on Jesus. Just like in Christian's journey, he had to keep his eye on the light above the wicket gate. Remember that part? Even before he was through there, he had to keep his eyes focused on something. That's, that is a key part, uh, a big part of your wristband, is those coordinates. And you guys will remember that, that that's what that represents. It represents Jesus. 
And as much as I love Christmas, and as much as I love setting up a nativity scene in my house at Christmas, and even going to some live nativity scenes where, where people act out that, that story of Jesus' birth, that's awesome. Christmas is great, but Easter is even better because it's wonderful to know that Jesus was born and that he came here and that he lived among us. But the reason that he's our savior, the reason that we need to keep our eyes focused on him is what's on the other side of your wristband. And some of you have already noticed that. What's on the other side of your wristband? Oh, not that part. You've got a cross on there. And that's to help you remember not just Jesus as a baby, but Jesus as a man, who just like those verses that we read this morning, a little bit earlier, I mean, eyes and ears up here, just like those verses talked about Jacob and Israel and God redeeming them, that's what Jesus did on the cross for us. That's why the cross needs to be on there too. Okay, we need to point to his birthplace, but we also need to point to what he did on the cross, the sacrifice that he made for each of us. And then on the inside, if you haven't flipped it in and seen it yet, it says Pilgrim's Progress, so that will help remind you. But this is more than just something just for you today to walk out of here, okay, and, and have as a souvenir from this year, but also as a reminder to you, just like Christian, all in his journey, he had his book, right? And he had to continually be reminded, unfortunately, till he finally started doing it a little more on his own that he needed to refer back to his book. He needed to look in his book for guidance, right? He needed to listen to the words of evangelist and those other positive influences that were in his journey. And I hope that this serves as a reminder like that to you, that when you see it and wear it, that you'll be reminded if you're in a place like a doubting castle and you're worried about a giant or you're worried about getting stuck in a slew of despond, that you will look at that and remember some of the characters that we've learned about, but the verses that we've applied and the questions that you've applied to say, hey, how can I navigate this situation? What can I do to be more and guided by interpreter? How can I be more of an encourager and more faithful and more hopeful in my journey? But another thing I hope this does for you is that I hope it's not just a reminder for you. I hope it's something that someone else will see and, and say, hey, Sadie, what are those numbers on your wrist? And then you will have an opportunity to tell them, hey, let me tell you what these numbers mean. Let me tell you about this place that it represents on the map. And let me tell you about the important person that was born there and who died for each of our sins. I hope, and a lot of you said this in what you wrote about your Jacob and Israel name change. You said, I want to do better telling others about God. So for you, maybe that's what this is for. Maybe it's not just a reminder for you of the things that you've learned, but maybe it's a tool for you to use to open up a discussion with a friend or someone in your family who is going to ask you, hey, tell me about that. Tell me a little bit more, okay? Let me pray for you guys as our praise team comes on up to close our time out today. Father, thank you so much for this journey that we've been able to take together. And Lord, as we have, have wrapped up all the things that we've learned, Lord, I pray that you would bring to mind the lessons that we've learned when life happens in the next year or the next day or the next five months. Lord, whenever things come up, Lord, I pray that you would help each student be reminded of what they've learned and the things that they can do to take on those challenges and to take on those situations in a way that is pleasing to you. And Lord, that you would help and use this as an opportunity for them to help guide others in their journey as well. It's in your name we pray. Pray. Amen.